Call it a Minnesota revival, deep in the belly of a 128-year-old St. Paul factory. So this is actually a shape I'm making uh, for my Swedish clients. It's called the Smolt. Joe Peterson grinds away his time. We found this huge, massive, you know, three city block long old canning factory. So we moved all of our stuff here and here we are. Joe shares a wood shop with Buddy Duff Thury. And we just make a similar product. Duff works full time building musky baits. Joe carves out time for more of a hobby after work sort of thing. For sure, his hobby turned into a true Minnesota outdoor art. I make true glide fishing lures, so I make fishing lures only. I make rubber lures, make wood lures, almost all cedar, all handmade by me. Uh, I make, make everything from scratch. So pretty much everything that we have here right now is 100% handmade and it's by one guy, it's by me. Well, I guess I travel up here a couple years now just to get these. Musky baits that attract real attention. See, Joe only sells at a couple of small sports shows. <laughs> Funny, but he often sells out on the first day. Uh, the action, the, gl the glide action and stuff, I mean, just the paint jobs, all the whole package. Joe starts each build with a piece of cedar wood. I like it because you always know what you get. It's always a stable piece of really buoyant wood. I don't use routers at all. Um, everything that I do is hand profiled on a, a fence sander. I feel like then you get these really organic curves. It is here that an old woodworking cliche applies. Simply remove what does not belong and the art slowly takes shape. You know, I'll, I'll do the gills on here instead, I'll do the mouth, and then everything else I'll paint. This to me is actually kind of the heart of the whole, whole deal that I do. Like literally, the baits look really pretty, but the part that makes them work is what I'm doing right now. Joe drills holes to add weight and exactly balance each bait. You know, if it sinks two, uh, five degrees down like this, too much nose down, it's not gonna work in the water. All the baits are particular, like this one has to have a little bit about two degree nose up. Life, right, right in life, it's what inside, what's inside that counts. And if I was gonna say a, a wood bait like this, start to finish, be probably about, probably about a week for me to make in general. The last step is a humdinger. Can shaker, spray job. So I'll put on a epoxy, I'll paint some different colors there, put on a couple more coats, paint again, more coats, paint again. And so if you see my lures up close, this is definitely a dimensional feeling to them. They look 3D um, because I painted through the layers of epoxy. For me, it's kind of my signature, it's what I like. The end result, stunning. So I might make on a really good year, maybe 500 on a really good year. On average, just a couple hundred lures, I don't make a whole lot. For me, this is my way of getting, expressing myself, right? And yeah, I say there are too. That's why anglers and collectors buy out True Glide baits at almost every sports show. I'll say, oh, send me a picture of the biggest fish you catch on, and they'll say, oh no, that's going on the wall. And like a little piece of me dies every time they say that. I think they're more artistic when they have big scratches from a muskie or a pike on them, of course. But yeah, there's, uh, it is kind of cool that people collect them as art. Joe collects in his own way. <clears throat> Got a little bit of everything. So this guy here, this is Kit, Knight Rider. This is the alias. So I actually have my own beads made for me that have a hole that allows you thick wire and still rattle on the thick wire. Okay, I'm a nerd. No, he's actually an angler at his core. Good luck, guys. Which is why he tries to fish a lot. And guess what? He always fishes his own stuff. And this one is Adele. Adele's caught a lot of fish for me. This is actually Adele 2, because Adele 1 met a untimely death against a rock wall in Canada. It's unbelievable. Love it. An angler who plays the game 
by his own rules. Hello. <laughs> and just loves the game. Oh, come on, dude. This is my spot. I was here first. You cut me off. OK, you get out of here. I mean, one, of the, one of the nice things and the annoying, annoying things about musky fishing is you have a lot of time to think, <laughs> you know? And for me, I'm thinking about lures. I'm thinking about, like, OK, that fish followed this time. What could I make next time to make that fish bite? That's how I keep things going. Up next